Rizza, yeah. Shardy, yeah. Neb, Neb. All right. Do you want to hear what I had? No. <laughs> <laughs> white, red, white, white, red. We're back. Uh, it's another week of blind wine tastings. I was on absolute form last week. Hopefully I can carry that over to this week. I'm going to start out. Looks like we've got a nice little mix of reds and whites here. Again, sorry about the massage. I lost a bet, but sticking around for now. Let's go. Cool. Uh, moving on to wine number one, we have a lovely golden hue, uh, white white uh, wine. That looks like orange wine, but honestly, after doing this thing for long enough, you have no idea. Man, I wish I had more to say about the smell of these wines. It smells white. Let's be real. Um... When the nose doesn't give you much, and there's a bit of heat to it, uh, it's a little bit bulbous, a little bit more globular. Um, I'm kind of vibing on like Viognier here. I'm thinking Rhone Valley. Something like in that really fleshy, textural white carrot category. It's probably not at the top of my agenda. I would need to have a really good reason. So for this reason, I'm actually gonna go just with one glass. These wines look really good, matured for like a decent amount of time. So I'd like to see how this fleshes out given the higher amount of, uh, higher amount of alcohol. First red wine for the week. Uh, really cool, sort of, it's seen a little bit of bottle age. Doesn't smell light. I think this is gonna be quite a heavy red. Um, let's see. Could be like an Australian Nebbiolo. It's not tannic enough though. So, I'm really confused about what this could be. It smells like cherries and um, sort of uh, pot puri. That sort of dried, dried flowers. Nice medium body. Sicilian red number, this might cost you about 40 bucks, and I'd probably grab three bottles of that. Uh, honestly, uh, what's a 50 bucks a bottle? If someone was like, 50 bucks a bottle, this is what you get. Um, I think you'd be pretty impressed. And for this price, you know, I'm gonna, uh, like six bottles. White little ditty here. <sighs> Instantly, comparing this to wine number one, which I thought was a Chardonnay that's got a bit more of that uh, butter that I've heard from Chardonnay drinkers, this one looks a lot uh, cleaner, a lot less of that yellow, a little bit more see-through. It's pretty yummy, quite tart, decent acidity. This could be this this could easily be Polish or River Riesling. That smells really, really delicate. Um, this has a sort of more like lime zest. Oh God, he's good. That's definitely sharp. I love this style of wine, but I would be more inclined to pay a little bit more and get a few more of a wine of a superior quality. On to wine number four, another wine of crystal clear, brilliant clarity uh, and uh, pale straw color. Maybe a little bit of oak in there, I think. Mmm. That's hot. Slightest lick of like lanolin, which has got me feeling in sort of textural uh, white wine categories. This definitely feels not Australian. Oh, bang, fuck yeah. Bang, we're on again. Woo! All right, wine number four, welcome to the party. That's great. Oh, yeah, it's kind of got a Marsan Roussan dealio going on as well. What I've picked up from this so far is if something smells a little bit hectic in white wine, it usually means it's going to be old, it's going to have all this flavour profile that's like, mm, not necessarily something that I'm into. Ah, this is a babe. Oh my goodness. It's good. It's yummy. When I'm not over the mood about it. Um, feels like a pretty well-balanced Chardonnay. I feel like they're all sitting around $35, $40 this week, but it's that classic thing when you're doing a multiple choice quiz and you've answered B three times in a row, you're hesitant to answer B the fourth time. But I'm gonna go 35 again. Hell, I said it. Um, good, fun, easy drinking, nothing wrong with it. Um, is it blowing my mind? Probably not. It's exactly what it needs to be and exactly what I expect it to be and that's a good thing. Right, wine number five. I was gonna say four, decided not to. Wine number five. Oh man, that is sublime. That smells awesome. Um, it's got this really ripe strawberry character, really cherries, good tannin structure, great acid. 
getting a little bit of fortification from it. Obviously this isn't a fortified wine, but I'm really hoping that what's gonna happen here is I'm gonna get some almost like candied flavors coming out of the grape. Yeah, that's, that's spicy. That's a really cool sort of cumin and star anise. Oh yeah, that's great. Really, really good. You could sit and think about this wine for quite some time, or you could just, I don't know, be watching telly and, and you know, drink, you know, mountain full of it, if you could afford it, because I think it's probably gonna set me back a pretty penny. I'm like, uh, I'm probably gonna chuck like $65 up at this thing. I think it's an Australian Nebbiolo. I think um, it's a really well executed, well aged, well matured, uh, incredible example of this. And the final wine, pretty dark, pretty ripe. Well, this is different. Uh, this looks thick. This looks absolutely absurdly thick. Like most of the, like this, if you look at this red next to it, like quite translucent, you can see, like I can see my hand through that, no chance, it's like a swamp. Now that is cannon. I, it wouldn't surprise me if this has seen a little bit of age. You know how like quite often you go to smell milk in the fridge and then you'll be like, Oh, I need to check if the milk's off. And then you can't remember what normal milk smells like when you smell the new milk. I was like, oh, it's gonna be Shiraz, and I smelled it, and I can't remember what Shiraz smells like. No, this is Neb. This is another Nebbiolo. Surely not. This is so young, the tan tannins are so green. They're almost too green. Uh, I'm gonna say that this is pretty expensive because that tends to be the case. I don't like the expensive wines, I like the cheap wines, which is shocking because I've got obviously very expensive taste. Um, Man, I'm gonna take a punt on this. I'm I'm thinking this is like 85 bucks. I think this is, this is right up there. So 85 bucks, um, I'll buy a dozen of these. I would absolutely want to shove it in the cellar. I think this is a bit of a, like a, an iconic uh, style of wine. And if it is not, I'm still willing to pay 85 bucks for it. And it's a very, very good deal. But um, yeah, bonkers. Okay. Well, you guys are going to have <laughs> egg on your face. All right, well, let's see. I reckon we might for some. Wine okay, number one probably uh, just didn't didn't really score very well. I found this wine stupidly closed. Very stupidly closed. tight. Not tight as in coils, just kind of like, it wasn't really giving much. Nah, it was pretty, new. there was not much going on in the glass. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I went first, so I'm just gonna refresh my memory with all these wines. <laughs> Let's see what it was, Loggy. Tell us the price point of it. I'm curious. Ooh! Doily! Doily! <laughs> hey, we're on! Look out, fellas. Well done. I got 35 to me. 35, very close. close. Not what do we got, enough. what do we got, what do we got? Hey, oh, Wheelie! Oh. Hello. Not a shame, um, no. Now, was this there? They did a Robola Giala, I think, maybe? This might be or a is this Pinot Green. Uh, Frulano. Frulano. Yeah, that's really cool. Oh, all right. Number two. Uh, we're all in pretty much agreement here. We'd all, we'd all have a crack at it. Um, Everyone's taken home at least uh, three bottles. Three bottles at a minimum. Uh, Lockie, what do we got? We're in that sort of 40, 30, 40, 50 range, mid-price range. 27. Ooh, yeah, cool. Good value. Bargain for all of us. Good Let's value. have a look. What do we got? Uh, we were thinking it was... Morello, Pinot, Light Red, Grenache. Yeah. No, I, mean, right. I thought it was Grenache, so let's just take it. If it's Grenache, style. I'm going to be so like, if it's Grenache, right I'm going to lose myself. What is it? What, what is it? What have we got? It is Tinto Monastrel. That's really cool. Uh, so, uh, Monastrel, Mataro, Movedra, often blended with uh, Grenache. Uh, very, so that's very, where I got confused. Very interesting uh, little example of this and really good price point. Like really Spain, good value. Spain's hitting. Yeah. You know, Spain's hitting. That's, this is the thing is like, we don't see enough Spanish wine or we don't honestly drink enough Spanish wine, probably in Australia in general. So this one will sneak under the radar and it's actually really delicious. That's a really good alicante from Espana. Uh, Telma Rodriguez. Cool. All right. Uh, in the same sort of ballpark, wine number three. Uh, we've got uh, around about the 25, 30 buck price point. We all, we all literally were in agreement that we think it's Riesling. Mm. If it's and not I, Riesling. Something in the back of my head was like, maybe Sav, maybe Sauvignon Blanc, but I don't know, the acidity. It's not gooseberry and passion fruity enough. It's got to be Polish. It's got to be Riesling. It's got to be Riesling. All right, let's see what we got. Price what, point. what do we have? We're all about this sort of 25, 30 bucks, 35. So we're in that sort of entry level price point. 38, mm. cool. All right, so it's lifty. Ooh, Riesling's at 38. Mm. $3 off again, just may I say. Is it Riesling? It's not Riesling, is it's it? It's not Riesling. Uh, it's a Riesling. It's Riesling. Hey. <laughs> Tazzy! Tazzy, yeah. yeah. Scrumptious, crunchy acidity. Rivulet? 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 
uh, Riesling. Uh, Kira Bryan, uh, amazing winemaker, fantastic. I think ex Brisbaneite as well. Uh, down there, another doing, one, utterly am another one. See, this is the um, thing. It's Tassie, so you've got to add an extra ten bucks yeah, to, exactly. the, to the price point. Uh, Which it's, puts it's, it all at the same. So. It's really good Tassie Riesling. Yeah, um, yeah, very tasty. I thought this next wine was a little bit of like a. Like a, a textual Italian esque variety, you were down on Chardonnay. Yeah, it feels like ripey Chardonnay. Ripey Chardonnay. You were buying on Pinot Grigio. Screams. <laughs> Screams. Clear, clear as mud. What do we got, Lockie? What do we got? Lemon. 40 bucks. Good. All right, cool. Good, good, very good. And it is, it's Chardonnay. It's Pinot Grigio, Chardonnay. isn't it? Chardonnay. You tell me, Lockie. Oh, what do we got? What do we got? What do we got? It is a, uh, oh, with wording like that, I'm pretty confident that uh, it is white a, wine. Is a white wine from Italy. I don't think it's Chardonnay. <laughs> Could be. P Piccolo, no. Piccolo, Piccolo de Thona. De Thona. Google it, come on. Google come it. On. it, Vignetti Boveri Giacomo. Under <laughs> wine number five. Uh, this is where the shit starts to get really interesting. These were the highest, these last two wines were the highest scores. Let's have a gander. What do we got? We got much. Good value. Bargain, good value with that. 39 bucks for a wine of that quality. I think that's got a lot of finesse to it. Again, I was close. And what do we got in terms of... Oh, no way. Not even Aussie. El Vortolina. Hey, uh, Nebbiolo. Yes. Um, not New World, but it's actually really interesting. So, um, and it explains the lower tannin profile. So this is Chiavanesca. This is the, the other place where Nebbiolo is actually um, uh, native to. Uh, right up in the Alps, like right up, like north, oh, yeah, north yeah, yeah, past, yeah. Cool, cool, uh, cool. like well past Barolo, like right, right towards Switzerland. Um, and Valtelline is actually stupidly expensive sometimes. So what did you say this was? 39 bucks, $39. That's dope. That is a very cool for people that are like interested in, tra interested in trying like genuine um, Italian Chivanesca or Nebbiolo, another synonym for it. Cool, Sandra Fay. Uh, moving on to the last wine. This was interesting. I thought, as soon as I smelt it, I was like straight on to Neb. Yeah. But the color, man. You still reckon it's Neb, that color I, is dense. It's just the tannic, like, it, I just went with my gut with this one. It's so tannic, it's quite green, so I was pretty young. I just, it just, it's hard for me to tear my way from, tear, tear myself away from calling it Nebbiolo. What are we looking at, Lockie, man? Because like, this seems to be like a pretty ritzy wine. Ooh. Whoa! Like, pretty close. Whoa. Whoa. I, was, I was gonna put 90 down. I was gonna put it down. Could have ordered sure man. Sure you were. And sure it you is, were. and it is. I was like, Bordeaux. Got or, a red no, back. no. Oh, no. Alianico. Oh. Dope. That's cool. That is cool. Alianico? So. Hell yeah. So, this is made by the one and only Frank Cornelson. Seriously? Yeah, this is his no other way. winery. This is his um, um, uh, companion winery. Totally, that explains so the colour, it explains yeah. the density of tannin, explains everything, man. Uh, and explains the price point. Yeah. <laughs> totally explains the price Thank you for joining uh, a few winners, uh, a few sort of lackluster wines, and an awful lot of Italian going on. Yeah, there's a. I, I think I think the guys are sometimes always are playing to their market. They are. <laughs> they, they know me. I does love also it. stand out as the first time that I've ever guessed a varietal is correct. Yeah. So welcome to another day. Well done. Race. Good on, yeah. Leveling up. Just leveling up. Until next week. Catch you soon.